I would really like to recommend to breeders not to breed for the generic dog, for the, the dog that just passes everything. You want to really accent the hallmarks of the breed. So many times in the past, and even today, a lot of times they're looking, breeders are looking to breed to a top winning dog. While that may not really be necessarily the best dog that's out there. So I would definitely you know, tell other breeders to pay attention to the things in your line that you think you need. If you have a straight tail, you better start breeding to dogs that have beautiful J tails. If you have snarky temperaments, you better try to breed to a dog that has a lovely temperament. It's not always going to the most popular dog. It's going to what best fits your line as a breeder. And there are certain things that, uh, as far as like some things in movement and shoulders, and rear ends that can be cr really connect, um, corrected in one or two breedings. You can get that. Other things take a long time to get rid of. Uh, sometimes those uh, really high tails or the short tails come back to haunt somebody if they don't try to you know, do better with their breeding with that. So again, just look at what you have, look at the past, what the dogs have been in your dog's genetic makeup and their heritage. You can somewhat predict what your dogs are gonna look like based on what, what they came from and really try to evaluate the deficits that your dog have, has. There, there are no perfect dogs, but you can always try to do better by improving on whatever it is that you need. Be objective. Always keep your eyes open. Just because you like it doesn't mean it's correct. Go back to the breed standard. Make sure that you're drawing upon those words in the standard to help you put dogs together to try and improve the breed quality and to be able to retain its strengths. That would be my biggest message to the breeder. A message to every breeder from, from my point of view would be improve, fine tune, but don't, intent, don't try to reinvent. You know, just take what you got. It's got many, many generations of dedicated breeders behind it and try to approve it a little bit on the margins, but you're not reinventing the breed. It's understood by the judging community the, the importance you place in keeping a breed that's very distinctive and very predictable for what your standard calls for. It's also very important that you don't try to change the breed to your own personal preferences. You want, the standard is a standard and it's, it's a good blueprint for you to follow. There's no reason to change a breed that's been around for 50 or 100 years that's very distinctive. And you expect to present to the judge a dog you'd be proud of for the right reasons. And that's to be specific to the standard, presented in good condition, we have a saying, when a dog's ready, it will win. And sometimes a dog with a lot of potential and it's age appropriate, and be respectful of another quality dog that you're showing against. A message to the breeders that I think we, we, we need to just stick to type. Um, we have a lot of diversity here in America right now, um, which is, is true of any young breed. And as they develop and grow, um, we have to find that media and not go overdone or underdone or or you know what what you know breed to the the popular sire the the dog that's winning the most. We have to be able to hold our own and truly breed to that standard in order to keep the integrity of that dog. And so my my message to other breeders out there is is find your style and stick to it. Stick to your guns when you're breeding because. Uh, if you don't, that's how we get into problems with health and, and we get dogs that are oversized or undersized. My suggestion to breeders would be to continue to breed to the standard, to read the standard thoroughly and often, and to get your hands on as many English cockers as you can. 
If I could deliver a message to every breeder, it would be to go back and read your standard and pay attention to the standard and breed to the standard. I can't tell you how many times I've had other breeders tell me, ask me my, my opinion about their dog. And I will nicely point out one or two things and say, well, doesn't this concern you or doesn't that concern you? And their answer to me would be, well, the judges put it up anyway. So if I could give any piece of advice to a breeder or a new breeder would be, pay attention to your standard, breed to your standard, and don't breed just because the judges put it up. If you're breeding something and you have faults and you know you're perpetuating those faults, it's not the judge's fault, it's your fault. And that would be my best advice to a breeder, is to pay attention to the standard and follow it. <laughs> Stick to type. Learn, put your hands on as many dogs as you can, and you'll start to feel where yours are lacking. And always, always be super critical of your own dogs and look at other dogs only in positives. Maybe some dogs you look at, you can only come up with one or two positives, but that's how you learn to be a better breeder. The message I would deliver is really the, the basic fundamental premise we live by when we're breeding the canine dog. And we're not trying to improve the breed. You know, sometimes I hear breeders talk about improving the breed. We feel that we are preservation breeders in the truest sense of that word. What we're trying to do is honor the thousands of years of history behind this breed and to keep it alive in the modern world. So my, my advice to other breeders is there's nothing really to improve on here. Uh, what we have is living history and let's try to maintain that. I caution the breeders today that they not make this breed fancy because it will lose the essence of the character of the breed if they do so. And it's very tempting to go that direction. That would be my biggest recommendation. If I could deliver a message to every breeder, I would say, read the standard and understand it, that the dog is a moderate dog. It's not a giant dog. It's not overcoated. It's, it, it's not a caricature. It's a working animal. And we always have to keep that the standard says in the very first line of the standard that any imbalance in legs and movement should be severely faulted because the dog is a working dog.